And good evening, folks. You're listening to Arcane Radio. I'm Sean, the Fork Chop Forker, as always, joined by Lon Strickler. And we're going to do things a little different here tonight. Lon, why don't you read our guest's bio, because we're going to get the kick, we're going to get the show kicked off in good fashion here. Yeah, our guest tonight is Albert S. Rosales. Uh, he's had his own little history of uh, strange encounters which led him to create the Humanoid Sightings Report and Journal of Humanoid Studies. Uh, it's an unparalleled repository of reports and accounts of human and not-so-human entities reported over centuries and from uh, from all over the world. The accounts range from the unexpected to the expected uh, grades to the unexpected and other high strangeness. strangeness. Uh, the archives used by researchers throughout the paranormal ufology world. So I'd like to introduce our, our guest from Miami, Mr. Albert Rosales. Albert, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, Lon? How you doing, Sean? Good evening. I'm here in uh, Miami, 90 degrees. <laughs> well, it's, hot. <laughs> it's hot up here, it's too, hot. man. Yeah, it's oh, funny because really? we're like in wow. Pennsylvania and it's uh, 90 degrees. So we're kind of yeah. in similar climates today. <laughs> well, that's strange. <laughs> no, it's, it's, we we get some pretty nasty summers up here with the heat and humidity. So uh, yeah, that's that's something you know. I and I've been down in Florida at this time of year, and it, it really it's almost like the same type of weather. Sometimes it's uh, it can get pretty humid up here. Well, I've so been up there in New York. Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, Albert. You know, I've been I've known you quite a while now. Uh, I've been using your uh, your archive, humanoid sightings and studies, uh, the research you've done, compiling that unbelievable archive. How many listings do you have in there now? You know what? I daily I work in this on this thing. I either update some of the incidents or I correct do corrections or I add new ones. I'm thinking I got almost. Eighteen hundred. I mean, eighteen thousand right now. I guess oh, I recently, couple months ago, I updated the, the database at UFO Info, so it should be almost eighteen thousand by now already. Wow, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Because I know, you know, I, I kind of stumbled on it when I started doing the blog, and uh, I used a few of the, uh, the a few of the accounts you had put on there, and. Uh, Oh, you know, it, it was it was amazing, and it really did help me, especially at the beginning when I started out. But you've you've been kind enough to do several articles for me uh, to put on the blog, which have been very popular, and uh, yeah, that's much appreciated. Well, I have, you're welcome. I'm working on additional articles right now. Hopefully, when I retire soon, I'll be able to go, uh, you know, like full term studying this thing, uh, writing and. Uh, Maybe investigating more in depth cases. Okay. Maybe, maybe write a couple of books here and there. You know? That's what I want to do. Well, you know, Albert, uh, I, I know you've got some cases, some new cases you want to talk to us about. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to hand the show over to you and let you uh, talk about some of the weird and strange uh, incidents that have been reported to you. Well, you know, I, I use your blog a lot, too, to uh, read some of those cases. You get a lot of them, too. There's some real doozies there. But let me let me tell you about um, uh, there's been some really lately some strange cases. Uh, there's one in Argentina I like to mention. I don't know if you guys heard about this one, but the, the hunter supposedly uh, shot a, uh, a humanoid or an extraterrestrial. Um, this is a... Uh, Back, uh, he said it was uh, a couple months ago. He was out hunting. I gotta look and see what part of Argentina was this. Argentina is, uh, is usually an area that every year we get some weird stories from there. Mm-hmm. A lot of weird reports. But this is a. Uh, he, he says that it was uh, from the area of uh, La Pampa, uh, a community called Luan Toro, near the capital Santa Rosa in La Pampa. The guy's name is Alberto. Tavernese, uh, 59 years old, he's a hunter. According to him, he, he went out hunting one day, and he was uh, 
in a, in a hunting stand, and he was suddenly, according to him, he was surrounded by five ETs. He calls them ETs because he said he said they looked like the ones you see in the movies, typical gray. He said they were about a, a meter and 15 centimeters tall, not too tall, four fingers in each hand, and they surrounded him. According to him, uh, they abducted him, and then they brought him back to his house. After that, he went out looking for them, according to uh, Mr. Tavernese. <laughs> and he, <laughs> I guess he was upset, and he, he actually he, he said he claims he shot one of them. Uh, and according to him, he shot him in the head, and he went to the location of and, and found actually found the body of the EP. Uh, but uh, he said he was confronted by three other ETs, and uh, which retrieved the body and took it away into a nearby spacecraft. Now, the, this uh, case was investigated by, uh, I believe, a, a local reporter there, and it, which, uh, he interviewed the uh, the Mr. Taranis, and he found them very credible. I mean, this is not the first time I hear something like this uh, uh, ET being shot. I mean, it's not really to us to make, you know, to make our decision or to judge, you know, the, the case, but uh, I found it pretty interesting. Besides this case, it's another case, uh, this one from Mexico. Uh, according to the uh, the, the uh, witness here, he was, uh, uh, it was an, according to him, it was an attempt at abduction. And he was ran, according, he was knocked down by a UFO and he sustained uh, injuries to his head. Um, now, he didn't see any entities, and, but he, he only saw a craft. This happened in recently in July in Mexico. I'm trying to look at the location, but I remember back in the day when uh, there were UFO cases, we, we will learn about the cases, not immediately. We will have to either wait for uh, news to come up or. The internet has really uh, changed that, but I've got a couple other cases here. This is from Spain. There's been a, an upsurge of cases of humanoids and uh, entity encounters there. Uh, this this one um, was sent uh, for April 4, 2015, in an area called uh, it's a wooded area, like a park, in Sierra Morena, uh, a, a witness. Uh, a lady named Laura Pardo. She was out, um, you know, uh, hiking in the woods. And according to the, to the lady, she heard noises and looked and saw a figure, tall, dark color, that was running. And the figure was running too fast to be a human. And it was very tall and totally black in color. She couldn't see any details of the figure. It disappeared into the woods. Uh, this spooked her, and she left the scene. And another similar case, also from Spain, but in a totally different location. This is in the Canary Islands, in Tenerife. I've been there, beautiful place. Uh, hike. These were hikers. They were mountain climbing, actually, up in, um, in one uh, near El Tati, which is a volcano there in the Canary Islands. And they, uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, right. They behind a, some boulder, they watch a silhouette of a person, according to them. Uh, but it was a person that was also totally black in color and at least 3.5 meters in, in height. Very tall. I'm talking about over eight feet tall. Uh, and they uh, attempted to follow this person, but it, it, this uh, figure or entity ignored him completely and, uh, and ran uh, in, in an angle on the side of the, of the of a cliff and dis- and disappeared from sight. Uh, like they they claimed that he ran down like the side of the hill or the mountain at an impossible angle and disappeared. Hmm. Interesting. You, you said uh, that you said it looked like a shadow. It, it was like a dark figure. More more. Oh, okay. It had more substance than a than a you know. It was like it was definitely a figure of a human light, but like very tall, three point five meters tall. Right. Not shadow. It was more like a, you know, uh, you could tell it was clear. Uh, now there's there's another case that that um, I haven't really. St-
started compiling uh, cases for 2015. I'm starting to do, to do that now. I've been involved with other stuff, very busy. But uh, I've been putting together some of the more interesting ones. This is this one here is from Florida. I don't know if I sent you this one, Lana. I might have. Uh, this is a, a trucker uh, back in, in uh, April 2015, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in uh, Tarrytown, uh, Florida. This is a very isolated spot up there. He was driving an 18-wheeler uh, north of uh, State Road 471, about, about 60 miles per hour, when he noticed like fl flashes of light on the, side, on the east side of the road. He slowed down and noticed uh, what he described was uh, an individual uh, at an entrance to a logging, logging trail, okay, about mm -hmm. three meters from the road. He, you know, he slowed down and uh, he, he looked at the individual and, and he appeared to be wearing some kind of containment suit, white in color. And this figure wasn't that tall. He was like between 1.5 to 1.8 meters tall, but not really that tall. And he had appeared to be operating some kind of device, which uh, this uh, figure or individual held in front of it at mid midsection level. And this device emitted like rapid burst of light in a clockwise circular direction downward downward and cone according to the driver here the truck driver it coned out at a 30 degree angle and according to him he, he saw like an, uh, some type of unknown substance or organic material in the air that seemed to react in the, in, to the light pulses around this individual um the, the light the uh, that this uh, device emitted was white in color, and it illuminated the, uh, the de details of this figure, you know, his suit and where he was standing. According to the trucker, the suit, uh, is, this individual was wearing footwear, mm -hmm. which was different, different in uh, material and color from the suit. It appeared to be darker, uh, dark brown in color, the uh, boots. And he seemed to be wearing some kind of harness system uh, that extended over the shoulders. And then that at midsection, and the harness system supported a what appeared to be a pentagon-shaped box on the individual's chest. So he got a lot of detail, I guess, because of the light. Uh, it was also white in color, with with gold mm -hmm. or dark brown, like a geometric uh, symbols in the front of the chest. It didn't really go into detail about what what type of symbol, but he was he said it was geometric, and the the individual was also wearing a large oval-shaped helmet that reflected the light uh, from the device and headlight from the, uh, his truck. And he said, uh, actually, the total time of the encounter was maybe over eight, nine or, or eight seconds. And he okay. was about five meters, yeah, five meters away from the uh, this individual. Now he continued driving. He continued watching the uh, figure, and then he uh, kept uh, he left the scene. Uh, and reported the incident over the, uh, the CB radio. Now I'm, I'm thinking this this uh, this case was investigated by uh, by law enforcement because the report was very detailed, and I can't confirm that, but uh, I thought okay. it was a very interesting case. Now there, there's um. I, I got a, I got a question for you. I got a question for you, Albert. Um, yeah. it, does it seem to you that the the, the the press, the media in uh, the Latin American countries seem to uh, report on these type of incidents more so than they do here in the United States? You know, I, th I think so. I think the, the, they take it more as a matter of fact or, or more more seriously than, than most of the media does here. Yeah. For some reason, especially in South America. There, there's a lot of activity there, and a lot of it is just taken for, taken for granted. I mean, right. some of the uh, some of the uh, the governments are even just uh, you know admitted that they're being you know like in Brazil, uh, Ecuador, Peru. They're, they just have constant activity there. Argentina. They used to follow the uh, you know our uh, the United States the United States. Example here, example here, which they were, you know, tight lip about the uh, phenomenon and denial, denial, but not anymore. It's been years now. 
Yeah. Really more more open down there. Yeah, because I you know I've noticed you know especially with Scott Corrales and he reports um, uh, in Expicata his you know a lot of these news reports yeah. that come out of the out of South America, South America. and it's yeah. pretty it's very interesting uh, that they they re- report these things to the degree they do as opposed to what they would do here in the United States. And, you know, the one thing I'm looking forward to, and I, I know you've been bo- you were born and raised in Cuba, uh, or is when we start opening up a bit more diplomatically with Cuba, and hopefully we'll start getting more reports from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of cases from there. I, I have a, some, I have a lot of them in my file. Uh, yeah. In my Facebook page, uh, I, don't, you, I don't know if you've seen it, I recently posted a case from, uh, from Cuba, uh, for a security guard that encountered a, la- a craft and a, a like a, something that looked like a robot near the craft, but this is back from November '95. Mm-hmm. Not not the not the Serata case, which you know about, which you had it had yeah. it blocked long ago. This is one different one, and th- there's been a lot of cases from there. There's uh, been a, a abductions, um, there a lot of close encounters, uh, mutilation, even Bigfoot uh, incidents in Cuba. A okay. lot of it is not, uh, you know, it, it investigated. But there's a lot of um, UFO interest in the island, believe it or not. There's a lot of uh, little groups here and there that, that they do active investigations. I'm in, I'm in contact with maybe one or two. A lot of them are visited in Miami, and uh, the, they have given me cases, you know, very interesting cases, actually, from Cuba. It's, it'll be it'll be interesting yeah. to see what comes out of Cuba as opposed to what's coming out now. Uh, hopefully, there will be some new cases. Uh, I tell you, that, I, think it's be hot. I think it's going to be almost like Puerto Rico. Perhaps oh, more really? cases on much larger much larger country. Yeah, and there's a yeah. lot of places here that are almost like pristine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I'm expecting I'm expecting some humanoid or cryptid encounter cases coming out of Cuba. Hopefully, uh, I mean I I think it's going to be quite interesting. Uh, I'm going to need to get a contact down there. <laughs> I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I'm. Oh God, I I just I, I'm hope hopefully we're going to get more out of there. And I know you know I know Scott Corrales is a hell of a job picking up some of these reports and I'm quite sure he's got yeah, he a lot does. of good contacts as well. And, uh, he's, uh, him on that. And there's, uh, another local researcher here, this, uh, Virgilio Sanchez. Okay. Yeah. He's the one that investigated. Remember the, uh, Filiberto Cardenas abduction back in 79. Yeah. Yeah. He was a, yeah. He's the one that investigated this guy. And he was, uh, he has a lot of cases in Cuba, and uh, I, what I could do, Lon, I could send you, I could look through my files and get some of the ones that nobody knows, very little known cases from Cuba. I oh, posted I'd one of them. I'll send them over to you. I, uh, you know, Brent Rains from uh, AP Magazine. I, he, I sent him uh, one the other day about a, um, a flying humanoid from the encounter in Cuba back in 1952. I don't know if you yeah, heard of that. Yeah, I think I remember that. I think I remember yeah. reading it. Yeah. 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 I think I posted it in my Facebook page also. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of weird cases from there. Just let them know because of the political situation, which, you know, yeah. the politics always get in the way. But, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, there's a, a lot of so a what, lot of weird uh, stuff. What, what has been, uh, I mean, now I'm talking like the last five years or so, what seems to be the most prevalent type of humanoid cases that you're hearing about? You know, the most prevalent has been like now more than five years is like the, the type of humanoid that is usually encountered in, uh, in a lonely spot or uh, maybe in, in your bedroom. Bedroom vis- visitation, I call them, or a, a lot of the researchers call them. Uh, bedroom visitation, uh, or maybe you're out in the woods somewhere and you encounter a humanoid that you don't see a craft. You just mm-hmm. encounter a human. You might be out there walking your dog or walking and jogging, and 
something crosses the road, you know, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, there's a either a right. weird creature or a humanoid, or maybe you're driving down a lonely road or a highway in the middle of the night, and there it is on the side of the road, something, uh, a figure or a humanoid standing there, which you know has been prevalent. Uh, and, you know, not to say there's there hasn't been uh, encounters with craft and humanoids. Uh, there's uh, there's been some late, as of as of late. Uh, there's one from Spain, which is a very amusing, a very interesting case. From October of uh, 2014, I like to just briefly mention it. it it's very interesting. Yeah. The, the type of a humanoid that was seen. This is a. Let me bring up the, my. Uh, my database here. Uh, it was a, a guy, again a guy in, his, in a vehicle by himself. Most of these encounters, uh, one or two witnesses, but uh, he came up on a, a hovering. Uh, let me let me bring up the case so I don't want to give you more details mm-hmm. of what he saw. Okay. And uh, very interesting. There's also oh, I know there's been some great cases in Spain as well. I. I mean, there are there been some very interesting so, cases. So, I mean. so, yeah, remember the one I sent you about the the giant uh, figure that was encountered by several men? That was, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, from August of last year. Right. Uh, a giant, giant type of humanoid. There's been a lot of, uh, for some reason, certain areas of, of, of you know, of the globe or, or of the earth, it, it, some places they, there's a lot of prevalence of, of different types of humanoids, either the giant ones or the human-shaped ones, and then in other places you get different types of humanoids more prevalent, more prevalently seen. I, I don't know why it's some kind of pattern sometimes. Yeah, I, I have know a, the, you know the only case I think I ever remember coming directly to me was that rept, reptilian case I had last year uh, that was in in Spain, but. Um, I mean, I don't have very many come to me. I mean, but I know you and Scott get many of them, and uh, uh, it's it's Here, they're very interesting cases. Here's the one I uh, that the one I'm talking about. This is in the, from October second, two thousand fourteen, at eleven p.m. at a place called uh, Torre Vieja in the province of Alicante, Spain. This person re- wanted wanted to remain anonymous. He was traveling in his vehicle on a, on a road called San Miguel de Salinas Road near the villages of uh, La Torreta. When he noticed on the right side of uh, on an empty field, he saw a neck shaped craft about 100 meters in length, gray in color. Mm-hmm. He said he had a row of windows resembling those of a bus. It looked like a bus. And there was a bright light coming out of from, from the windows. He was resting on the ground on a type of landing gear uh, that he compared to a helicopter, but there was no noise. He, the witness, and he became curious and approached the uh, the object. I guess he was. Let me look. He was. Uh, he wasn't in a vehicle. He was actually walking in the area. Okay. He approached the object, and he stopped uh, to look. And suddenly, uh, without knowing from where, since he, he said he didn't see a door, he saw a strange creature or figure appear. And he said that mm-hmm. this figure, or human, that was about 1.5 meters in height and had large uh, donkey-like ears. They were wow. dangling down and, and long dangling arms. And what something that scared them the, the most was they, they had red glowing eyes. Okay. And he said suddenly this creature began to emit uh, bizarre, uh, bizarre uh, sounds, like sounded like a dog barking, barking huh. sounds. Uh, at the same time he did that, the glow in the eyes will increase. Every time he emitted that that sound, that barking sound, the, the red glow in his eyes will will get it in more intense for some reason. Uh, this frightened hmm. the witness. I would have been frightened too. Who quickly turned and retreated. To about 100 meters from the location, uh, he, uh, at that safe distance, he, the witness uh, looked again, and the strange creature stopped his barking, and then inexplicably vanished. He didn't see it going and in, go inside the crash; he just disappeared. 
Uh, immediately after that, the object rose into the air, appeared to stabilize, and then shot away at a, a very high speed towards the northwest. He said, according to the witness, he returned the next morning uh, to the site, and he found an area of uh, flattened grass on the side of the road. Interesting wow. case. Almost, I mean, sound, you know, the description, it sounds like almost like a dogman type of entity. Uh, well, it, it made barking sounds, so that's pretty weird. Yeah. And, and the, red eyes, the, the red glowing eyes. Yeah, the long ears and uh, such. Uh, um, you know. That sounds oh, a, that description sounds a lot like some of the uh you know, you know dogman uh entities yeah. that we we get over here. I know it, you know, and th that's something that oh god, I don't know for whatever reason. Uh but the dogman sightings have really been picking up. Dogman and uh, and the uh very uh like Part there's been a lot of sightings uh, with uh, in connection to Bigfoot and um, what do you call it? and 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 UFOs in, in in the near vicinity. Yeah, they always thought there was it is a con there is the connection between both of them. Uh, you know that brings up a lot of uh, discussions, but I think there is a connection between Bigfoot and UFO. Yeah, I, I do too. I mean, I you know you know, you know how I feel about it, and uh, you're preaching to the choir when you're talking about that here, but. I, uh, you know, in the 1970s, it was just really prevalent that these sightings were, were coming up Bigfoot, UFOs, uh, yes. and, and you still see a lot of that. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. It was, you know, of course, Stan was reporting this in the early 70s as well, up in Pennsylvania. And for whatever reason, it seemed like that was, you know, that was the area where a lot of these reports were coming from with the connection with, uh, you know the UFOs, the Bigfoot. I, you know, I, I do, I do believe there are there, there is a connection with cryptids and, and UFOs overall. Um, you know, just like that case I've discussed up in the Atlantic Maritimes, uh, and um, well, and I'll be more specific. I'm up in Nova, it's up in Nova Scotia that this uh, that you know that. This witness that I, I have been I had talked to for years uh, had seen this UFO, this egg-shaped type UFO, come down, and some type of some type of entity came out of it, and uh, the the footprints were like large turkey footprints. I mean, like 13 inches wide, 13 inches long. Uh, you know, it's not just Bigfoot. I mean, they're they're these UFO sightings seem to be connected with other types of cryptids or other type of entities as well. And of course, humanoids. And uh, yeah, I think well, there I, is a connection, yeah. Albert. I, I agree. Uh, in, in Puerto Rico, back in 95, when the, the so-called Chupacabra right. uh, in which a lot of the incidents over there in Puerto Rico were directly connected with, uh, the, with UFOs. Every time that there was uh, some UFO uh, Chupacabra appearance. Uh, there were UFOs in the area. They were in the same area. They were like either nearby or they were seen in connection with the chupacabras. Right. And some of the chupacabras, some of the original sightings of the chupacabras, which nowadays people think for some reason that mangy dogs are chupacabras, which is totally wrong. I mean, the, chup the original chupacabras are creatures that they had uh, uh, in, like a uh, in spikes running down their backs. Uh -huh. Their eyes will glow. Their oval-shaped eyes will glow uh, red. Sometimes they were, they will, it will be like a spike that will come out of their their, their mouth, and I think that that's what they use to suck the blood out of the uh, goats or the animals. Anyway, there, some of the original witnesses were police officers, and uh, according to them, they uh, one of the cases, this is in 95, they approached a couple of the chupacabras, or one chupacabra-type creature that they saw on a, on a tree, and one of the officers approached, and suddenly he uh, he seemed like uh, he, he became uh, confused. According to the officer, he, the the creature, whatever it was, was trying to control his thoughts. I mean, he became very confused and, and afraid, and he left the area. But that happened a couple of times. It's more yeah. it's something more to the 
some of those cryptids. And, uh, yeah, the, you know, it's, and, uh, these reports that we get out of you know out of the southwest of the United States, even up in well, in Oklahoma and parts of Texas. I mean, those are yeah. just those are just either either some type of hybrid wolf and coyote or some type of dog with mangers or whatever. But, uh, you know, th- those aren't chupacabras. Of course, it, it sounds good in the press when they put it in there. You know, yeah, and, that's what they uh, do. They, they just, I think they just do it for, you know how the press, they want to make it a big joke. Sure. Or they call them chupacabras. Yeah, but yeah, and, you, and you know yourself, the, these original chupacabra sightings that had first come out of Puerto Rico, and uh, they're, boy, they're practically spread all over all over Latin America, but Puerto Rico, Mexico, uh, I mean, those are the ones that are prevalent. And I'm per- quite sure there are some Chupacabra sightings in Cuba as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, they've been associated so, you know, with there were, there were some sightings here in Miami also in the, some oh, really? in the west of Cuba and, and uh, Sweetwater. Uh-huh. This is back in 95, 96, and I was in me and Virgilio uh, Sanchez Oseo. We were at the scene of some of the uh, Chupacaba attacks. I'm talking back in the day when I was actually out there in the field. Right. With some right. of the people here in uh, um, Virgilio. I went to a location where there was like uh, an LF for uh, the elderly people living there. And then a lot of them, these people, they will stay up all night. A lot of them didn't sleep well. Anyway, I talked to a lady that she... Um, and that night she looked out the window and she saw like what, what she said was a, a he looked to her uh, like a bipedal animal. She couldn't really describe it too well, I guess, but it was walking on two feet, or and it was like in the backyard. And uh, the next day they found some uh, dead chicken. They had a goat and the goat was found dead. I saw the goat myself, and I could tell you that uh, it had holes and around the neck area, round holes. It wasn't tore like a dog will do. You know, a, a dog will tear up and bite it. And, and, no, this thing was like they had two holes in the, in the neck. Uh, and after a while, the Berhelia and several other people were there with the dead uh, goat. We didn't know what to do with it. The, the owner didn't want it, but some kind of uh, liquid started coming out of the holes. It looked like some kind of green ooze. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and then about a, an hour later, some guy showed up in a white pickup truck and picked up the, the goat and took off. We we never knew who this guy was, but that's wow. it. Somebody took it, and we don't know what happened to it after that. And this is back, I'm yeah, talking about know, yeah, well, you, you know, JC's reported this phenomenon as well in the Four Corners. Uh, basically, and, and this, this is something I reported maybe four years ago or so, where these uh, large sheep, were being attacked and uh they would find these things dead with a hole on the side somewhere around the neck and you know mm-hmm. there were a drop of blood on the ground or e- inside the inside the animal so something was sucking it out and I didn't uh, see anything. yeah yeah it's yeah. uh it, it's a it's a very odd phenomena but it has nothing to do with these these mixed these hybrids that people are seeing running around in this, you know, in being the put dogs, in coyotes, whatever they are, I don't know. Dogs or whatever they, yeah, whatever they want to call them. Um, you know, I know, I know Ken Gerhardt did a, did an investigation one down in Mexico about a year ago. Uh, that was a really interesting case. Uh, and the, the, the rancher actually, you know, did a did a description had a description done of this, and it was the uh, it was kind of like the uh, standard chupacabra. Uh, I yeah. guess it was about maybe three foot long, maybe two maybe two and a half foot long, and had teeth and oh, you know, it was it had some type of proboscis that came out of its mouth or whatever that actually right. sucked out of these animals, like a tube that will stick yeah. out of his mouth. And and if we, I, mean, I guess we'll use that up to to suck out the blood or whatever from the from the animal. Yeah, there's been yeah. recent recent mutilations in uh, Argentina again. They've been found. Uh, I mean, this this never ends. It's like and, and I remember uh, even in the, in the Ukraine back in 2005, 2006, there were reports of uh, chupacabra type creatures attacking uh, you know livestock and stuff. 
So it, it, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah. Do you uh, do you it. think it's possible that some of the um, the cattle mutilations that we have seen over the years, uh, basically those mutilations where there's probably a you know it looks like a whole, one hole is on the animal or a few holes. And, but, you know, it, it seems like the blood sucked out of him. You think there's a possibility that it could be a chupacabra or do you think it's, you know, something else that may be associated with UFOs that's, you know, that's doing it? Well, you know, some of these animals, like, they're big, some of them, they're like uh, very big bulls, like eight, over 800 pounds. I think it, it has to be something bigger than a chupacabra right. to be able to do that. Right. A chupacabra. The ones that are, I mean, they're they're like scary looking. They're uh, but they're not as big. They're not they're not uh, very big. The ones that the descriptions that I heard, uh, they're not big at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, and some of these uh, cattle have been killed and found with holes, or their their anus go cored out, or different holes in the body. They're, they're very large animals, mm-hmm. and something something must have been mobilized these things to these animals to be able to do that to them. I think. I don't know why, but uh, like you were saying, back in the '70s, uh, that's a weird. That was a weird decade. Some of the incidents that uh, the cattle mutilations in the West, Idaho, Arizona, and that area, mm-hmm. uh, there were actually incidents where they were where people saw strange uh, figures in the uh, in the fields floating around or in the corrals. And, I mean, they were not publicized that much, but there was a lot of uh, Strange. Uh, I mean, maybe there was humanoid seen in, in connection to some of these uh, mutilations. Well, you know, I believe I believe there have been a lot of sightings that people had just haven't reported, just like in anything else. Uh, you know, I, I yeah. it's something that like, people think that nobody else would believe what they saw, but uh, there there have definitely been some really odd some really odd encounters and, and you know, on these ranches and some of these some of these out these farms that are way out in the boonies and uh i just don't think you know i just i just think that they kind of keep it to themselves and don't want to say it to anybody uh, you know and i do hope i do hope more of these chupacabra uh incidents are starting to do start to get reported uh because that's one that's one phase in cryptozoology that I believe just really needs a lot of examination. I've just really been very wary of the Chupacabra reports, but unfortunately it's been because of some of these other reports that are absolutely nothing to do with it. But, right. uh, yeah, but I, you know, I hope it's something that we start getting some information on. Uh, Scott Corrales, he wrote a very good book on Chupacabra incidents. I don't know. Yes, I, he did. He yeah, it escapes me right now, but it was just one of the first books that I got that I read completely on the, on Chupacabra incidents. Besides, before before that, I had actually uh, received uh, reports or read uh, reports from Puerto Rico from uh, Jorge Martin. Mm-hmm. He was one of the original uh, investigators in Puerto Rico that was first. He first documented a lot of the early Chupacabra encounters in Puerto Rico, but. Uh, mm. there's very few books that you, that you know that you can read, but that's one of the one one of the books. And uh, Jorge Martin also wrote a book on Chupacabra in Spanish. And it's never been an English translation. I translated a lot of the cases there, and they're in my database. Uh, mm-hmm. They're scattered out of my database, mostly from uh, from '95 and '96. Uh, a lot of these cases that he covers are uh, most of them are UFO and Chupacabra connected a lot of them in Puerto Rico yeah well now you live in Florida and uh you know I I have been able to get a lot of reports of some really strange activity in Florida all throughout the state uh yeah. especially that, that area up around Tampa Clearwater and those counties surrounding there there of course there's been some Bigfoot activity there for years but um uh, well let's put that way skunk skunk ape activity but there, there has also been a lot of odd humanoid and uh, and other entities as well. Uh, have, yeah. have you ever investigated anything up there in that that part of the state, that central part? 
No, not myself. I haven't been up there to investigate anything up there. I know some of the other members from Yipon here, Mary Margaret Simmer, has been up been up there, but I I have investigated cases here locally in the, okay. in, the in the area that that we call the East Everglades, which is uh, okay. Well, they got farms there, mostly like goat farms, cattle, you know, uh, pig farms. There's been a lot of cases there, like. Um, I talked to a guy there that he had. He owned some property there. A lot of these property now have been taken over by the government because they, they didn't want people to build into the Everglades for mm-hmm. environmental, you know, reasons. Anyway, he said, well, he he had a lot of strange encounters there. But but he claimed that one day he, uh, him and his uh, like a uh, higher hand, maybe one of the workers there with him, they they heard noises in like in the in the woods in the field, and they came up. There were he said there were some men. Uh, driving what he he looked to him like uh, those those dirt uh, those buggies that were, that you could drive in the, in the dirt but they they were a little bigger and these mm-hmm. men they were like tall. according to him they were very tall they seemed to be wearing some kind of uniform they were blonde hair and they were they, didn't, uh, they ignored these people and they were in his property so he his uh his higher end took a shot a pot shot at one of them. And they took off, and they followed these men. And according to to them, uh, they disappeared into a field, in which they after that they saw a huge light take off from there and, and leave. So they're, they're think they, he told me that he think that these people were, went inside that light, whatever it was. I'm thinking it was some kind of UFO. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's other cases, a lot of uh, stuff in West uh, West Dade County, Miami Dade County. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard a lot of them in that in in Dade County. Uh, for, I don't know why, but I haven't. You know, there haven't been a lot of reports. But you figure, you know, since you know the Everglades do come up to in into uh, Dade County, we would hear some more. Um, but really, Florida in itself, the whole state's got some really weird stuff going on. I, you know, I I believe maybe twenty percent of some of the weirder stuff that I've ever have received has come out of some place somewhere in Florida. Uh, you think so? Oh, I think so. I that um uh, that area I had talked about earlier that that south southwest Florida, southwest central southwest Florida whatever that is, which was yeah, Tampa, uh, in the water. Uh, yeah, uh, Lee County uh there around um uh, you know, Tampa, Clearwater and some of these uh a little bit inland from there. The, 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 yeah. DeSoto County, the area, that area in there, there have been a lot of really odd, different and different too. It's not it's not just skunk apes. Uh, it's these um, oh I'm, even even dinosaur type creatures. Uh, oh yeah, it's, 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 it's some strange yeah, yeah. things. And then and the first day I had another well the family from this this person I talked to I mentioned earlier as far. His nephew went out fishing in the canal west of there, and he said he saw something in the in the in, in the tall grass, looking at him. That according to him, it looked like a like a di- a little dinosaur standing on feet. Really? On feet. This is huh. uh, also here in, in West Day, and uh, I knew a, re- a retired police sergeant that he was out on uh, on stakeout for drugs in the East Everglades. This is back in the maybe early '80s. And him and he looked. They looked up and he saw. They saw something like that, that appeared to be covering the stars. I go, what is that? And they they looked up with their binoculars, you know. They, and they they saw the, what they reported seeing was a huge. He told me that it looked like a huge boomerang. But it was like if you didn't look at it, you wouldn't notice it was there. Only they could only see the stars being blotted out as they flew right. over. They, 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 and they were like, and these guys were like. They were on and they were scared. After that, they, I, I think they left the, the stakeout, but uh, this was told me by a retired police sergeant. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, a lot of police officers and, and uh, uh, civil servants do see a lot of things that they're afraid to yes. report, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, every once in a while, I want to get brave enough to put a report out on something. But... Uh, you know, I believe, well, just like, you know, this part of the country up here, 
I, I think police officers see more bipedal something out there at nighttime that they care to report about. But um, occasionally some will come out. Um, Sean, do we got any any questions coming out of the uh, out of the chat room here? Yeah, we do have a question. Question from Damien. Uh, he wants to know uh, from uh, Albert. Are there reports of large humanoids in other countries that are settled as islands? Uh, reports of humanoids in, in other countries that are what? That are uh, island countries. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, there's uh, like New Zealand. There's uh, reports of uh, humanoids there, uh, some large humanoids. Uh th- Japan, there's been reports of humanoids there, and I mean that. When he says large, I don't know what what he how large, but there's been reports from uh, Dominican Republic, uh, of course Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, there's like a a whole menagerie there of uh, of uh, humanoids. Uh, in, in Cuba, some of the cases that I know, the, the humanoids have been, have been pretty tall, uh, large. Uh, now, there's very little information as far as uh, some of the African con- uh, islands, like uh, Madagascar. Madagascar. Yeah. There, there have been cases there, but uh, I don't know too much information from there. Well, there have been uh, traditional but, cases in, like, you said Japan, but in the Philippines and the Indonesian islands and Malaysia, Java, and those areas, they've, uh, they're yeah. about a good deal of... Uh, Traditional sightings and uh, reptilian type sightings. Um, I mean, over the years. I mean, this is is something that's been just recent. This is something that's been going on for hundreds of years. And in in Chinese and excuse me, in Japanese culture, uh, there there are a lot of uh, humanoid type of uh, yeah creatures in their in in their in their uh, legends and. uh, but the uh, Kappas, which are reptilian, reptilian yeah. uh, amphibian type humanoids, and right. then in the Philippines, they have a lot of traditions, uh, a lot of you know folklore dealing with uh, all type of humanoids uh, and the flying humanoids. They have several uh, type of flying humanoids, and according to some of the, uh, the Filipino sites, they're still being encountered in modern times. And yeah, so if you ever watch the TV show Grimm, they'll they'll make reference to a lot of these traditional type of humanoids, um, but you know that they'll in, in, integrate into the show, and they've done that for several uh, several types of humanoids worldwide. It's been uh, it's pretty pretty interesting uh, to see what they've come up with on that show. Well, that's the only question we got. Oh, there, there's like a, the, the, the type of uh, the humanoids, uh, like centaurs, uh, uh, little leprechaun type humanoids, uh, the, uh, the fae. Uh, incredibly, this, this type of report is, is still being, you know, reported uh, in, in modern times, uh, that type of uh, creature. Yeah, I see somebody in the chat room, Mark, has mentioned uh, Vancouver Island in Prince Edward Island, which I can attest to uh, in the Atlantic Maritimes. There have been a lot of odd humanoid-type creatures seen in the Atlantic Maritimes and reported uh, over recent years. Um, As well as in Labrador or in uh, Newfoundland, there have been a, a very odd sightings uh flying flying humanoids especially a lot of weird flying humanoid type things uh and of course some of the you know some of the things i've reported on over the years particularly that conawaga phantom that's some type of humanoid i believe and uh you know i really haven't gotten a good beat on that thing but i think it's probably a humanoid type creature so, well it's uh, funny that you mentioned, uh, you mentioned that uh Lon, uh prince edward island yeah. I was talking to a uh, Canadian fellow uh, investigator today about that. That in, all, in my files, I, I don't. I don't think I have one case in there. From, I have cases from the other mar, marin, marin, maritime provinces, but I don't have anything from 
Prince uh, Edward Island. I don't yeah, have I have. Um, I've, I know I've got at least one in my files, but I, I know I, I had done a case. I had done an actual uh, haunting case in uh, for in Prince Edward Island, actually in Charlottesville and uh, Charlottetown. Excuse me. And uh, the the witness or one of her friends had mentioned to me about uh, these. And they really didn't know what it was, but it was something that looked like men with wings. And, oh, really? uh, yeah, I never really get a, got a good description from her, but they said, she said there's something she had seen when she was younger and other members of her family had seen as well. Uh, you know, it's just that she really didn't want to, you know, say a whole lot about it. And it's, you know, it's something that I've been looking into to see if I could get more information but right. unfortunately, I haven't heard much more about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but, you know, I, I guess the, it's one of these phenomena that just spring up uh, in certain places. And, of course, the, the, this flying humanoid phenomena does seem to be prevalent in certain areas as well. Um, you know, and I, I mentioned Ken Gerhardt. He wrote a very good book about it not too long ago. And uh, it's some interesting stories in there. And I, but of course, Pennsylvania's had its fair share. Indiana, uh, Texas, of course, there have been. Yeah, uh, I think Pennsylvania is way up there. I'm yeah. Almost on my, my my thinking. <laughs> I don't know what it is in Pennsylvania, but yeah, we've we've had some strange stuff around here. And uh, something my, in the water. Yeah, maybe it is something in the water. You know, it, you know, I always think I always go back to that thought about it being a hot zone. You know. But, you know, what does that really mean? You know, but there's there are specific areas in Pennsylvania that have just had more reports of odd stuff, you know, just odd sightings, well, you know, it, odd encounters. Look, it's so much information that uh, there's a lot of books on UFOs in Pennsylvania, yeah. UFOs, uh, Bigfoot. And then you look at some of the other states, it's really hard to find information on, on UFOs. In no, Pennsylvania, yeah, the, you, you, have, you got dozens of books. Yeah, the encounters, have, yeah, the encounters have been plentiful in, in Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, why it's here? Well, I, I think maybe because of the wilderness Pennsylvania provides. It's uh, There's a lot of areas that are very little exploration. Um, you know, it's just a lot of weird things that show up there. Hell, hell Sean and Sean and I can attest to that. We both had encounters up there in the state, and uh, you know, this just like I mentioned before, this Conewago Phantom thing, that was in South Central Pennsylvania, and that's I'm not the only one that's seen that. I mean, there's been other sightings. Well, you know, but, Lon, the thing that's strange is we can't go a week without something strange being reported in Pennsylvania. Absolutely, that's the truth. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, even if it's just an odd type of uh, Bigfoot sighting or something, we uh, you know we're always getting something. Either that or a um, your Thunderbird sighting, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's that too, uh, or a flying some kind of flying humanoid, uh, or, or the flying triangle UFO type. It's very prevalent now. But lately, I've been noticing. Uh, I've been going through the MUFON uh, CMS logs and some of the other uh, sites this, uh, it seems like the this shape type of craft is making a comeback yeah it is i noticed that, that, a, uh, go ahead yeah. go ahead there's a, a recently also from argentina there's a this is a, a witness also in the province of la pampa and uh, reported seeing two disc shaped craft Near the ground uh, now, not uh, and I'm sorry in San Luis and San Luis uh, province in Argentina. Now in the same area after that, soon after that was another witness that reported seeing a <clears throat> something flying over the of a field that looked like a, a, a flying. It, it, according to him, it looked like an angel, uh, a white winged figure, mm -hmm. very tall, almost three meters in height. This is also a recent from Argentina. 
And uh, I, that figure or that humanoid has been seen in the area since 2013. And I've seen mm. a, a winged white figure. Now, and I know another case from Puerto Rico last year. It was given to me by a, a, a director of proof on a, a group in Puerto Rico. Uh, a winged figure was seen near uh, a, some, a hotel building. It looked, according to the witnesses that, that he talked to, a man and a, and a woman, it looked like a man, Caucasian type, with long hair, and he had wings. Mm. We're, we're wearing some kind of a white robe or something. I mean, I don't know. Was it an angel? Or what, what can <laughs> it, I don't know. I know. <laughs> That's what I mean... they, they saw. You know? Oh. I mean, why would anybody want to make something up like that for? I don't no. know. You're, I, you're I, right. You know, you're right. You're you're exactly right. I mean, you know, when, when if somebody comes to me and says, "Yeah, Albert, I saw two graves uh, in my backyard," I, I I will doubt him more than if somebody comes up to me and says, "I saw uh, something that looked like an angel flying over the house." I think I believe the guy with, with the angel story more. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you, you, you're just you're just like I I am. You know, I, when people take the time to make a report and. You know, it, it may sound a bit out there sometimes, but the fact that they make the report, you know, it, it, it tends to make me give them the benefit of the doubt, at least at first, but, you know, until I check into it further. But, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. that's the way you got to be when, you you know, you get this stuff. Now, you know, I know you, I noticed, and I mentioned this to you many times before, but uh, you seem to have some very good connections in uh, in Russia, and I, I believe you had some connections when it was when it was Soviet Russia as well. I I had a connection uh, for a, a researcher, a couple of them uh, from the Ukraine. Okay, it lasted all the way up to maybe four years ago. He okay. sent me. This is he will help translate a lot of the cases he will send them to me and I will what I will do I will send books to him that he, he that he wanted I'll buy him a couple of books and he send me a whole you know bunch of cases and like that I, I I received hundreds of cases from from the former Soviet Union Russia yeah. which is hardly known here in the West uh, a lot of them from like Incredible year in Russia and the Eastern Europe from '89 to '91. There were like hundreds of landings and contacts. It was just incredible what happened there. And it, it, it's funny because it's that article that I wrote about the humanoids and the fall of the uh, Iron Curtain. Right. Maybe there's a relation because that's when the whole Soviet Union just fell apart. And at the same time, where they had this tremendous wave of encounters one after the other starting in 1989 <clears throat> that lasted almost through 1997 slowed down yeah, I, uh, I noticed that myself it did seem that when uh when the the wall started coming down that a lot yeah. of these sightings started coming you know coming forward uh not only the same like that, that Hungary, yeah different in bulgaria hungary all the different Eastern uh, European countries. Yeah, yeah, that was that's true. I mean, you, you're correct. There has it seemed to be some type of connection there. You know, I don't know if it's actual connection with you know uh, the fall of the Soviet Union and you know the Iron Curtain, but then again, who knows? I mean, you know, it's just not too too coincidental. It happened at the same time, and yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was it had to do with with the change. I don't know. People became more it's open possible. and they, I don't know. It's very possible. Yeah, it is. Um, Definitely. So, well, you know, we're getting we're getting there to eleven o'clock here, Albert. You know, I, I want to thank you for coming on with us. Uh, I hadn't talked to you. Oh my. It's been a long time. I think it's been about four or five years. We had you on BTE <laughs> and. Uh, we got to do this more often. You know, I, I like to do it a little earlier, but it's okay, you know. Yeah, I, I, I like to do it and over the years, I, I mean, I really appreciate the contribution you made to the blog. Uh, I've gotten so oh, many uh, 
so many requests for some of your material and you know when you put out an article and send it out to me there there are a lot of people very interested in that material because it's something that's you don't see a whole lot and uh you know and especially it's not all centered around just the united states it's worldwide worldwide yeah yeah so that's what people like to see so uh yeah Yeah, we'll have to have you come back on really because uh some of this stuff is really interesting and uh you know, it just seems like stuff's popping up all the time. So we'll have to get you to come. I like to, come I like to make, uh, yeah, I like to make comparisons with cases, you know, worldwide cases that are very similar to each other. And I say, well, you know, this is a case that occurred in the Ukraine and it occurred in South Miami, Florida, and then they're almost the same. I, you know, how could that be? Uh, the same type of details, and it's just you know, there's there's a lot of uh, comparison, a lot of correlation that I that I have been able to make. In some of these cases. Well, I I appreciate, it, and I'm quite sure that a lot of researchers out there appreciate your your time and effort you put into the archive, and uh, you know, we, you. we look we look forward to reading more, and uh, we want to thank right. you again for being on with us. I will, and I'm, I'll be looking forward to doing it again. I know that uh, I, if I didn't have to get up or very early tomorrow morning, I will stay on longer, but I, I am <laughs> tired. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe I when I retire, i got to retire. <laughs> well, we thank you. <laughs> Thanks again. Well, I guess I'm getting people uh, sending me messages here now saying that uh, they enjoyed it. Very good. Very good. We thank That's you for joining us tonight, Albert. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, you guys take care, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully talk soon again. And, and Lana, I'll send you some cases soon, okay? Very much From, appreciated. Uh, mm-hmm. You're welcome. You take care. Take care. Albert Rosales, our guest tonight in the first hour. Ooh. What a good interview, Lon. You guys uh, really talked it up there. A lot of uh, great information that's going to be coming around and, and that we're able to share uh, with the listeners and more evidence that's going to get more evidence and reports that's going to get posted out to the blog. Yeah, uh, well, Albert and I have a history. I mean, we, you know, I've, I've been using his stuff for years and years. And, uh, you know, it, it's really cool when I could get, you know, I'd have a new report come out and I could go digging around in his archive and find something similar or something to correlate with it and uh it's it's been great and you know the last couple years he's been some writing some excellent articles that i've been able to um post on the blog and it's got some very favorable uh, reaction we know as you and i were talking about before we came back onto the air here tonight about you know trying to diversify the program a little bit and and getting on some guests that we haven't had on in the past and tackling topics that we haven't uh, tackled either in a while or at all. Uh, you know maybe there's a chance to bring Robert uh, yeah Robert Albert back. Sorry, we're all a little tired, folks. Albert back on a uh, semi reoccurring basis like we used to do with you back in the day and uh, yeah uh, make it like a regular feature here on Arcane Radio. Well, we do have a commercial to play here quick. I've been promising that I'd play this every week as long as we have a program online. So let's just take a minute, grab a drink or whatnot, and uh, folks, just listen to the promotion here for the uh, Hillview Manor, or the Hillcon promo in Pennsylvania. And we're back, folks. Uh, Arcane Radio, Sean Forker, Lon Strickler. Uh, Going to be talking here, just the two of us, for the next... Uh, 20, 30 minutes uh, about uh, things that have happened. It's been a busy week for me. Haven't had a chance to really peruse Phantoms and Monsters lawn or do pretty much anything else. Uh, you know how that goes. We get yeah. uh, caught up in the everyday lives. I know you've been busy. Uh, so it was really nice to get Albert on the show, though. We've been talking to Albert. We were going to have him on a couple months ago, and then uh, he had some family uh, issues that popped up, and uh, we just weren't able to get him back on. Uh, yeah, the there night. was a, yeah, and then unfortunately we had some issues too with you know we show and uh, we had to cut out for about a month or so. So yeah, I was glad to get him on here. Uh, it was really good, really good. I uh, I I I, 
I can imagine some of the stuff he gets. I, I really can. Uh, but he's very thorough. You know, it's funny because when I get a I get a case that classifies a humanoid case, if, if I don't have certain information in there, he's asking me about it. He wants to know. Uh, he wants to get it right, and I I applaud him for that. That's you know. So um. UFOinfo.com is where you can go to read his uh, report. It's a wonderful slash, website. Slash humanoids. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, going through the website, I mean, he's just not talking about extraterrestrials, Lon. He's talking about uh, cryptids, Bigfoot, dogmen, anything that fits into the humanoid category. Yeah. Uh, leprechauns, fairies. I mean, he's really investigating any claims that come his way that really involves humanoid-type Entities. Well, 18,000 entries, that's a lot of dedication. That really is. Uh, I had no idea he had that many. When he said, oh, sorry about that. When he said that number, 18,000, <laughs> I was just blown away. Like, wow, 18,000 cases that he's cataloged. Now, not yeah. all necessarily researched, but he's cataloged these. And he goes back, let's just pull it up here in the actual uh Oh, well, he goes back into—he goes actually goes back into the 19th century in some, some uh, <laughs> really odd cases, you know. Well, right now he starts at 4,780 uh, BC to 1869 AD, <laughs> then uh, up to more currently 1870, all the way up until 2014, and he said he's just now compiling. 2015s because when he was doing 2014s he said you know i think that's going to be the last year uh i do collecting and apparently he decided that he couldn't he had to go a little further so 2015 that's a lot of data you're looking at yeah but at you know there. what i've heard albert's i heard albert say that back in 2011 2012 oh, i gotta stop it <laughs> i remember a guy that you said that about on. I remember a guy that said that about uh, updating content on a regular basis. Oh, I'm going to take a break for a little while. And it, it yeah. still, it still keeps coming. Something about it. Once it bites you, you just can't, you can't get enough of it. And well, I tell you, you know, just like the blog, you know, I've, there have been times where I thought, Oh God, I got to stop this. This is, this obsession is crazy, you know, but I just keep going back to it. And it's, um, you know, it's something that just gets in your blood, man. You know, what I've been experiencing lately, and I'll share it with everybody, and I'll share it with you, is almost a paranormal burnout. It, we talk about it so much. You know, you and I, folks don't realize that just because we have a show once a week, you and I talk daily uh, about all this stuff. I don't think there's a day goes by where we don't have a conversation right. uh, about something going on. But it, not just that, Lon. It's on TV. It's There's like 9,000 shows, most of them crappy. On, on the paranormal, and it's just so much, it's overwhelming to really just sit there and enjoy it. And I was talking to Shannon today, Shannon Leeger, who was our guest last week, love Shannon, great friend, uh, about getting out there and just experiencing and, and being part of these investigations and going out and doing some of this just honest-to-God uh, fresh research, not even looking at old stuff, just new stuff, and, and kind of uh, reinvigorating myself a little bit. There's been an awful lot. I guess I'm just kind of drained on with what's out there. That's why, you know, these humanoid sightings are exciting, these dogmen, even though you and I have just really started talking about them, they've, they've popped up more recently. Uh, lots of new things out there to investigate besides just Bigfoot and, and ghosts, and I really want to get, uh, uh, pardon the expression, balls deep into these uh, phenomena. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, and that's one thing we're, we're going to want to strive to do is put some different stuff out there for people. And in fact, you know, we've got Ken Gellert coming on, coming on in a couple of weeks and he just started his new show, which is missing in Alaska, where he, he and two other gentlemen are investigating uh, missing aircraft and odd anomalies in, in some parts of the Alaska wilderness. And uh, we're definitely going to talk to him about that. Uh, and it's something a little different for him. And, but of course, you know, he, you know, he's been really big on the, the crypto stuff. Uh, he's been a paranormal investigator for a long time. So that, that'll be very interesting. You know, uh, just on the topic of missing, uh, David Polites, uh, kickstarting the missing four one one, the movie 
Uh, All right. Which uh, anybody listening would like to support that can just go to Kickstarter.com and just type in Missing 411. It'll take you right to that page where you can contribute and be part of making that project a, a reality. Uh, I, I think I'm going to be part of that. I was just talking to my wife. There's a couple projects on Kickstarter that I'd like to like to, to crowdsource and be a part of. Because I think once you have an investment into these, you know, you really have some buy-in into really wanting it to be the best product you possibly can. But, you know, just getting more information on this phenomena out there. The missing 411 stories, you know, these books are phenomenal. And one thing I didn't get to talk to uh, Albert tonight. Uh, and uh, it was brought up, and I think uh, it was, I can't go back into the chat, uh, by Brian Hastings, who's in our chat room. The question right. was brought up, are there any new, like, emerging patterns on any new types of uh, entities or, or humanoids we, we've not really become experienced with yet? Like, is he seeing anything in these in this database and these trends to see, is there now something new? Uh, out there, and maybe I, I read the question wrong, but it, it just is really interesting to me. Is there something new out there that we haven't really been investigating yet? Well, I, I believe when it gets comes to the paranormal and the supernatural, I, I'm just not really surprised at much of anything anymore. And if it, if it's something new, it's something new. Uh, I'm quite sure we're going to be having new things come up. Uh, you know, I get so many reports, it's it's hard to really classify uh, sightings that are new types of entities, anomalies, or cryptids, or whatever. Uh, they're, they're all different in my book. Uh, they're, you know, they all have their differences somehow. So, um, you know, that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. You know, that's, that's why we do what we do, to find out differences, or, you know, what these things are, and... Uh, Oh, and by the way, you know, I got a I got a pretty interesting report t this week, uh, this past week, about something that was seen around the Cherry Hill, New Jersey area, uh, flying humanoid. Oh, type. wow. Yeah, and, uh, you know, she, uh, the, the witness said she, she had come across my site looking for answers for what her daughter and her had seen in the sky, and, you know, and there were similar stories about that, so... She said, I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and approximately two years ago to this day, my daughter and I were riding our bikes. It was bright that night due to a full moon. Not many clouds in the sky, but a few that would once in a while make the, the night darker. Uh, she said, we stopped by a friend's house. Her and her two daughters came out, and we were all just talking. I happened to look up in the sky, and there's this flying, long, human-shaped thing with a wingspan of approximately seven to eight foot. Jesus. Uh, it reminded me of the Jeepers Creepers, the movie. Creepers. Uh, yeah, my, my mouth just kind of opened, and I was speechless and pointing as it went behind the cloud near the moon. I told them what I had just witnessed. Everyone kind of giggled. And I told them, you know, it did not come out from the cloud yet, you know, to keep looking. Well, to our eyes, it appeared again. And my daughter just stood there watching it, repeating herself, Mom, what is that? Mom, what is that? I, I know she had the same hard to swallow feeling I did. While wow. my friend's two girls ran into the house screaming, uh, we watched it flap and soared near the moon till it disappeared in the clouds again. And never came back out. Now, Man. she said, I, I, I know what I had seen that night, but wouldn't know what to call it except the flying human-like creature. An experience I would never take back. Uh, and when I hear others, I, I really want to believe that they'd seen the same thing I had. My daughter to this day, who is now 14, feels there's so much out there that we really don't know much about. Uh, is this a myth or what's, you know? Was it real? And, you know, she mentioned about her daughter down interested in uh, Jersey Devil, Mothman, Slender Man, and all that stuff. And it's kind of funny because the Jeepers Creepers reference has come up before. You know, we, about four years ago, Jace, he had an investigation of this this being that they referred to as the Night Stalker, where this thing had mm -hmm. been tormenting a family in in the Four Corners area. Yep, I and remember. their description was exactly that the Jeepers Creeper 
monster or whatever that thing was. So, you know, I put this thing out, and the next day, I got, you know, I, I got another report from Buena Vista Township, New Jersey, which is actually further east towards the uh, uh, the uh, the Pine Pine Barrens area. And uh, it said, Lon, I live approximately one hour outside of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And while on my way to my now wife's home to visit, as the sun was just going down, my best friend at the time was driving. And we were all going to hang out. I was listening to music and looking out the passenger side window, just enjoying the woodlands as I like to do often. As we approached an opening on the side of the road of the power line towers, I seen a lanky human like looking creature with huge black wings flying up into the clearing. The event shocked both myself and my best friend at the time, and he was driving, so much that we decided to turn around and try to get an even better look at it. By the time we had returned to the spot, however, uh, there was no sight of it. He and I had never really spoken much about it. Uh, you know, in fear of ridicule, actually. So... But in the instant I saw this on your site, I felt I needed to give this mother and the daughter a piece of my mind. They aren't crazy. And I know what I had seen. I have lived in the woods of New Jersey almost all my entire life and have seen almost all of the natural wildlife that occurs within it. And this was not one of them. And then he said, you know, he sent a, a Google map coordinates for, you know, where he actually saw this thing. So uh, he said it was a very bizarre creature, whatever it was. So, you know, now we've got flying humanoid sightings in uh, in New Jersey. Well, and they could have kept them know, out there, you know. They could have kept them out in the four corners. That thing damaged trucks and everything out there. That thing ripped that truck all to hell. And, uh, you know, they had a double wide, I think, where they were living at. And it ripped out the, the wall. and yeah, It was something uh, else. Yeah, that thing had some claws on it, so I don't know what the thing was. Uh, you know, apparently from JC had told me that th th there may have been another sighting sometime later, uh, something, either the same thing or something similar. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a very interesting incident, and uh, this the in, and in fact it, it kind of had a. Uh, it seemed like I had a fixation on one of the girls of the family uh, because she was uh, – it had actually done some something inside the house, inside her room, that uh, could have only been done kinetically, you know, I believe, with its mind. So uh, that was really weird. Yeah, it was. You know, somebody – and, Lon, I'll ask you this question. I didn't get a chance to ask Albert, but uh... – one of the listeners in the chat room uh, had a report of a uh, heat haze being observed around Bigfoot or these uh, bear cryptid type creatures. Have you heard of that? Like these animals or these beings surrounded by like a heat haze? I've heard it. Um, yeah, I, I have heard that before. And in fact, I have heard that this haze would actually be different colors as well. But There'd be like a, uh, I don't know, you know, the kind of wavy type thing you see coming off a hot surface. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that before. Yeah, I've definitely heard of that before. Like the radiation of the heat or something like that coming yeah. off the, yeah. the, the creature. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just bizarre. The fact that we have flying humanoids is scary enough, let alone the fact these things can radiate heat you know the next thing you know they're going to be coming out of the sea and destroying our cities and we're like war of the gargantuas and stuff all over again well you know i'm of the mind that for the most part these type of things aren't natural and uh ultra terrestrial right it's got to be there's got to be a, a some type of connection uh with you know an ultra terrestrial type or an interdimensional type of uh connection with these things because quite frankly I believe if they were natural there'd be more sightings and there'd be much more evidence and of course you know my thoughts on Bigfoot I think for the most part it's it's an 
an ultra terrestrial or interdimensional type being. You know me. Uh, I'd like the safe bet that it, that it's flesh and blood, but let's be honest. We don't know. You well, know? I'm never. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna say that it isn't. We we you have. Know, or there are some out there that are flesh and blood. You know, even these ultra terrestrials may be flesh and blood, but they're they're not sticking around. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's be honest. We don't even know if we're talking about the same type of creature. Even with Bigfoot sightings, the you know there are variations sometimes that are so severe you wonder if they're actually seeing the same type of. Same Absolutely. type of creature. Even, even to these last ones we've seen in Clearfield, this uh, canine-type creature was different than dogman sightings that have been reported in the past. So are there multiple either variations, multiple different species, multiple different types, or are there just separate, different beings or entities out there? I don't know. And, and I guess those are questions that the more and more we dive into this and explore i guess the more we'll understand but i guess we have to give some credence to the fact that these beings are here they're being seen they're being observed and we can't dispute that lon you know no. I, I think it's funny that still in the 21st century we can convict people on eyewitness reports people go to jail for life and we see how well that's working out but we can't <laughs> use that same eyewitness testimony to prove that things exist and that's I just, a good point. That's I, a very good point. I refuse to accept that everybody that sees something is mentally unbalanced. You know, that's just not rational thinking. You know, I don't believe there's mass hallucinations for these creatures. I think that these creatures are here and people are seeing them. I can't say it for certainty because there's no proof, but you know I've seen something that I can't explain and several times. You know, he was talking about that uh, bedroom visitor, you know, that uh, humanoid object, uh, you know, often visits people at nighttime. And, Lon, I shared a story with you where I woke up in the middle of the night. And I swore to God there was something standing in the corner of my bedroom. And I threw everything at it that wasn't nailed down. Woke my wife up, scared my wife up, scared the hell out of her. But I swear to you, as I said here, there was somebody standing in the corner of my bedroom. I've heard it before, you know, and it's just not been, you know, little green men and in graves. It's been other types of entities as well. And, and I'm not crazy. Well, I mean, I might be crazy, but you know, I'm a. I'm, I'm a professional. People rely on my word on a daily basis to rely that what I'm giving them is, you know, the truth. And, you know, I'm in my community and I, I have a wife and kids. And if I can see this stuff and admit it freely and I have no gain from, you know, making it up, I've seen something I can't explain and it's scared the shit out of me. Well, you know, these the, any type of encounter, <clears throat> excuse me, and, you know, even spiritual encounters or whatever. I mean, they can deeply affect people, and I, I've seen people that were deeply affected by things, uh, by situations like this. And, you know, it's hard not to believe them because, you know, you can tell that they're really talking about something that they at least thought they saw. And uh, that's why you got to give them the benefit of the doubt, I believe. And I, but I, I do believe that, you know, that people are really seeing a lot of this stuff and you know and basically because i've seen some things in my lifetime that i can't explain mm -hmm. you know and so who's just who's it doesn't happen to anybody else i mean well, i guess we could say we're a little bit more sympathetic to people that that have sure. these claims i don't want to say that we are also like destined true believers too that something that you know, that somebody tells us something that we instantly believe it. I think there's a little bit of a litmus test that has to be put in there. I can't talk tonight that, you know, we have to be able to prove that they're not, you know, blowing smoke up our bums. But we don't take everything at face value. But I think there are people because we've experienced something that makes you more of a, I guess, human BS detector. If somebody is trying to pull the, wools, the wool over your eyes, you know, because you've experienced something. And I've talked about this in the past when we were on Shannon's show. That I think once you experience something like this and, and you know how you feel, your own personal emotional reaction, you can gauge somebody else's validity by that. Just by watching their body language and seeing how they react while they're telling you this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's a connection there. And you, you just know that when I'm looking at, you know, Mr. X and he's observed this, I can tell you if he's seen something or not. I, you just know it, and I don't. I can't explain it, but you, you have a connection with somebody that you know. Wow, I can tell because I've been there. I know how they feel. Yep, I, I agree with you a hundred percent. 
but that's not scientific. Well, but... sure, it's not scientific, but, you know, in, in this field, if you're going to be scientific, you just might be a, may as well be a skeptic. I mean, you know, well, and that's the because, thing. There's two, the, yeah. Both sides of the equation on that one, right? You have diehard believers, which are a detriment to what we do. And then you also have the diehard skeptic, which are a detriment to what we do. Right. And, you know, I try to find myself as close to the middle as possible because there are some things I'm very skeptical about. There are some things I'm pretty, uh, I don't want to say passionate about, but some things I just really believe in based upon my own experiences. But I think that somewhere between those two extremes is where most of us need to try to fit in. And that's where we can start finding the real answers. You know, dare to be a little different. Think outside the box. Do these experiments. I said earlier in the chat room today, you know, Lon, at one time, everything started as a theory. Mm. Right? Somebody just had the balls to get up and do something about it and <laughs> test it that's out and true. test it out. And, and that's how we start getting, you know, actual principle and fact from all this. And and we have to start thinking about some of these scenarios as rationally as possible and try to do as much as possible to try to prove the validity of these things. And we're really starting to see that now as it's become more ingrained in pop culture, more socially acceptable to believe in these things. More people report it, more people come in, and there's more feet on the ground out there doing it. Now, whether they're properly trained or not, I don't know, because I don't think any of us can really be trained to look for something that doesn't exist. I think some of us have good ideas, but if we're all working together and we're all putting honest effort, I think we're going to start seeing some of this, uh, some of these answers finally come to light. You know, Dan in the chat room says, reptilians are said to be the really cruel beings. They look at us like we're cattle. I've heard that from many people, Lon, and I know you, you have opinions on the reptilians. And uh, anybody I've ever talked to about extraterrestrials, nobody ever once said to me, yeah, those reptilians, they're all right, guys. No, they aren't. Uh, I've never heard a good thing about them. You know, the best thing I've ever heard about one was that, you know, they'll go along with the agenda, but. That's about it. That's about far as it goes. Uh, if they gotta, if they gotta go along with something, they're gonna go along with it. But uh, uh, it's not their nature to, you know, to befriend other beings, especially humans. From what I've gathered and some of the things that I've, you know, some of the things I've been told by experiencers, and uh, well, I really, really I, I really can't tell. I, I can ne no. You're right. I've never had an. an an experience or an abductee or anyone else who's had an encounter with one of these beings say anything good about it, to be quite honest with you. You know, though, at the same time, Lon, I can't say I've heard anybody say anything about positive experiences with greys either. No. And nope. it's not that they're necessarily inherently evil, but you know that they, they are usually the ones that are, you know, poking and probing and probing people and and, uh, you know, just have a very different vibe, I guess, that put off. But I, we don't know how many different types of extraterrestrials there are, right? You know, we could have a, a variable cast of Star Trek out there floating around in the uh, out and outer space, and we wouldn't know it yet. But, man, some of these things I hear are frightening. Well, you know, there's been a story floating around. Oh, I don't know. It's it's been a while now, but there was something that came out recently about why are we trying to contact aliens? And well, why you know, would we two, want two ways to? of looking at that. I mean, first of all, they're already here. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, you know, if it, there there is some type of uh, non-terrestrial being that is living among us in some degree now. I think some we have people to be think that's nutty, but that I I believe that to be absolutely true. Oh come on, well you know, Lon, that if there is extraterrestrial life, it's been here. Sure, and I mean, uh, you know I have my own theories on that, and you know, you know I I'm guess not saying, we should you know, be I'm, careful when we're picking up the phone to make an intergalactic AT and T call because we <laughs> might as well just be wearing a bunch of T-shirts that says "Probe me, please." Uh, when we're inviting these things to, to our, you know, our planet, our home, and it's a little cynical, but, you know, this isn't, you know, Star Trek first contact and the Vulcans are going to come down here and shake our hands and live long and prosper and all that jazz. You know, the next thing you know, we're going to have uh, uh, a battle fleet of intergalactic alien warriors coming down here, blowing us the kingdom come, stealing our resources and turning us into a food source. Well, you know, I used to believe in all that, you know, the, the SETI and all that, that, 
yeah, it's a good thing to be looking for aliens. I used to buy into all that. But I tell you, after I've gotten deeper, deeper with witnesses and experiencers and abductees, I can't say that I buy into any of that anymore because, uh, for one thing, uh, we've already made contact, you know, point blank. And going out there and looking for more is not going to help us or be to our favor, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I guess we just, before we pick up that phone and make that call, we better be sure that, uh, you know, what we're inviting here realizes that, uh, you know, it's not going to be like that in-law that, you know, you called to come stay with you for a while. They don't get the hint to when the freaking leave <laughs> is that this, this visit comes with an end date. Yeah. And, uh, we, we better know how to deal with these things. Like I applaud us and, and our, uh, our efforts to try to be out there and discover life on other planets, but let's do it from a distance right now. What was this Kepler? Was it Kepler 40 or something? Lon? I don't remember exactly the, the earth's bigger twin cousin. Yeah. But they've discovered that, you know, they're really encouraged that there may be life on that planet because the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere, because oxygen's really volatile and, and it may show that there's life on that planet. We should be very careful. I mean, we're yeah, not going to get I, there I in our time. I agree because they may be there, and they may be, you know, they may be much more technologically advanced than us. And uh, we made contact; they may decide that, uh, you know, they need another colony. So, yeah, I'm, I, you know, this is all hypothetical, of course, but yeah, I'm, just, I, I just don't, I just don't have that mindset that we ought to be, you know, looking for ET as what we you know compared to what i used to think before well i'm not uh, trying to be xenophobic about it but i mean realistically <laughs> we're opening ourselves up to a no. uh you know just that open invitation is a little bit of a, a dangerous thing and we should think about that as you know i i really wish you know we could talk to these people that think they have the right to go and start doing this stuff and subjecting the rest of us to potential mass extinction uh you want to do that fine set yourself up on a little island somewhere and define your own coordinates or shoot yourself in the space but before you in, invite these people for breakfast you know make sure they don't want to kill us first yeah well i agree with you you know like i said i have i have not ever heard anything really good about any of the experiences that people have had and um you know it's you know they're they're just not they're it's just not something that we ought to be pushing our luck on as far as I'm concerned. And uh, Nope. And I, I think we got to this conversation by just bringing up <clears throat> reptilians. You know, that's how much reptilians bug us. They creep me out. You know, they, they just, <laughs> they're the type of aliens that piss me off. And uh, I don't even know why, because we, we don't even know they exist. But uh, I just, uh, I don't know. It just, it just scares me a little bit. They're not friendly, according to what we've read and what we've heard from people. You know, they do treat us like a food source. It's just, man, it just bugs me. They, they're, they're, they're creepy. Uh, speak of bugging you, the insectoids aren't much better. Yeah, this mantis man and whatever crap else is going on. Look, I watch <laughs> Star Trek, all right? These, uh, these mantis men, these insectoids aren't, aren't very nice. No, they aren't. And, uh, you know, I... A lot of these abduction cases, there seems to be always a, an insectoid overlord or an insectoid boss hanging around giving directions, and um, they seem to be run the show. I mean, I know people think that the uh, the reptilians are the ones calling the shots, but I think they're kind of like the br the brutes or the uh, the bouncers and uh, you know the strong arms. It was really uh, funny because Star Trek Enterprise, uh, anybody that was a fan of that show, they ran the season-long Zindi arc, and two of the species of Zindi, they were all a race of aliens. There's like five different subspecies, but they were all connected by a certain set of characteristics. One of the one of the species was insectoid, and the other was reptilian, and those two species were the most aggressive. So uh -huh. 
where do you think they got all this come from? Because they were reading your case files. You know, you could probably get uh, get a hold of Paramount and, and get some royalties, Lon, for all your reporting <laughs> on these alien creatures that they blatantly stole and, and turned into Star Trek aliens. That, but well, it, you know, I'm quite sure I'm going to be hearing more about it down the road. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can do at this point and is just report what I get and uh, let those who read what I write or report make up their own minds. You know, I'm, I'm not one that wants to tell anybody how to think about this kind of stuff, but you know, I can, I can kind of give, a uh, my thoughts occasionally and, you know, try to steer them. And, uh, well, you're a nice guy. I'm going to tell them to stop. Think about it before you do it, because you're putting the rest of us in jeopardy. Those of you out there with your tin can strings, rabbit ears, or, you know, multi-billion dollar SETI equipment, you know, just be careful. Think of the rest of us before you line us up as a hot lunch. <laughs> well, I guess that's the end of it for this show. I guess so. See what happens? <laughs> we get the guests oh, on my. early, and then we... Then I get, I get time to sit here and think and write notes down on paper, which is where the most danger happens. When I start uh, taking notes, I'm the screwed. same way. You know, when I start getting deep into this stuff and, uh, you know, and I, I start getting into research mode, it, it does get scary. And, um, you know, I just don't, you know, I, I just don't report everything I, I hear about. And I, I think... I don't know. I get people that I ask people if they think I if they think I ought to censor some of the stuff that I hear about and you know where witnesses tell me and no they want to hear the whole thing. Well, I'm still not in that boat yet. I I, I still try to uh, you know use a little decorum when I when I do this because frankly I've heard a lot of bad things and I just I'm I'm just not yet a ready to you know to put it all down in black and white well you've been listening here folks rk radio sean forker lon strickler our guest tonight was uh, albert rosales talked about strange humanoids we talked about aliens in us and you'll be able to catch the archive of this show on stitcher radio uh the app which is our preferred place to go and listen to uh, if you have any questions or comments, email us at info at arcaneradio.com. Get a hold of Lon through his blogs, phantomsandmonsters.com. And if you feel so inclined, check me out, theforkchop.net. Lon, any final thoughts for tonight, or are you about, uh, you about spent like me? Yeah, my voice is about ready to uh, shut down here, so I think I'm about... I'll just keep my mouth shut and wait till next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, a much better audio show this week. Uh, we yeah, apologize really for was. last week's snafu, but uh, we figured it out, and I promised you we would. But uh, next week, what do we have on the show next week, Lon? Oh, my God, I don't, I don't even remember. I don't either. So stay tuned to the website, arcaneradio.com, <laughs> to our Facebook page, and uh, we'll catch you all next week. Thank you very much. You all be good, be safe, love one another, take care of one another. And remember, before you invite them in, Check them out. We'll see you next week, everybody. <laughs>